Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, time for us to go through the papers. We call it Off the Press. Chris K. Wandu joins us this morning via Zoom. Chris, it's good to be uh, it's good to be back on the show and also have you join us. Good morning, and I'm back at the to you, my sister. How are you? Very well, thank you. All right, then we start off with the leadership newspaper this morning, and uh, our focus would be on some of the top headlines or stories, however you want to look at it. APC defends the choice of Shatima as Tunubu's running mate says it has thrown PDP off balance, sympathizes with opposition over political agony. Progressive governors accepts Ashiwaju's speak. Lawan Buni Omoagege orders pledge support. What Tinubu has done is team selection. Bishop Koka is quoted. These are writers you find underneath the bold caption. Now, you also have on top of the bold caption, uh, it has been very tough for me as president. President Muhammad Buhari is quoted to say it's been very tough for him. And there's always a saying, uh, it's more like a you know, parable or some kind of saying, very popular that if the kitchen is too hot, then it's okay to just take a walk from the kitchen. MPC members worry over Nigeria's $15.9 billion euro bound debt. Again, Salah apprehension as hoodlums lay siege to a lorry. Could a jailbreak two wanted terrorists rearrested in FCT and Niger? Nigeria missing as CAV releases final list for the 2022 awards. Terrorists may not allow 2023 elections to hold. Wow. And bandits demand 100 million naira from Niger communities for ceasefire. The headlines you find this morning on the leadership. We move away from the leadership, uh, turn our attention to the punch that's been made available by a paper vendor. Tinubu Shatima ticket, how Buhari doused governor's anger in Daura. We were surprised when Tunubu announced Shatima in Daura on Sunday. Bagudu, Lawan Badabi Amila orders endorses ex Borno governor. And fuel scarcity worsen. Abuja black marketers sell 350 naira per litre. And NPC blocks Exumobile's asset sale to sell pet. Power generation drops. This goes federal government battles for control and power. PDP power rotation too late now. Southeast should wait. <laughs> well, these are uh, the headlines you find. But just before we move away from it, why thugs invaded my office? Uh, or your tour general is quoted. And Song Wo Liu orders boat accident probe. Agency threatens sanction. For die in Ogun crash. FRC blames speeding. Federal government threatens sanction. Ghana alerts immigration personnel following the prison break. It's possible that you have, uh, you know, this person, the closest country. I mean, to move to ex workers tackle firm over gratuities. 13 colleagues die. Flooding Lagos Ogun resident laments. Uh, losses worth millions. It's really very really sad, you know, with this rain uh, that's been upon the people. But that's it on the punch. We have the nation. Shatima's choice excites Buhari, APC governors. Indeed. Bagudu Ewufai, fire me orders were okay with Tunubu's decision. A writer you find underneath the bold caption. Five die in Lagos Ibadan road crash. And Lagos props boat accident. 41.6 trillion naira debt. Nigeria's failed World Bank disclosure rule. And you find Oshun 2022 APC holds mega rally. SDP candidates home attacked by gunmen. Don't allow vote buying. Fire at 
Bodaji Market, two fleeing Boko Haram suspects rearrested and bandits kill 18 in Zamfara. Uh, that's it this morning on the Nation uh, newspaper. I'm hoping that uh, we can also check out the Nigerian Tribune and that we can uh, have that on the screen. On the front page of Nigerian Tribune, Nigeria lost 4.2 trillion naira crude oil revenue in six months. I mean, Nigerian Tribune might just be reporting differently uh, from what's happening and what's making the rounds in some papers this morning. According to investigation, Nigeria lost 4.2 trillion naira crude oil revenue in six months. False or uh, fails to meet OPEC quota consecutively for six months. That's a lot. And federal government blames all thief and theft, vandalism. These are the writers underneath the bold caption. I'm eager to go to Buhari, tells Nigerians. I'm eager to go, Buhari tells Nigerians. He just has uh, how many more months just before, the, before 2023? But some people will still say that if the kitchen is too hot, then it's okay to take a work. If the president is eager to go, uh, it would be very okay to say that the president would resign. I mean, it's not like he's been compelled to be the president of the country. If he feels like he can no longer take the heat that's coming from the kitchen, it probably might not just be too late to take a bow, but how many more months just before that? Beck's university lecturer says enough is enough. Again, Tunubu Shatima, you have the clerk, uh, the clerk, Buni Bajabi Amila, orders DIFA over the Muslim Muslim tickets. APC governors visit President OK Tunubu and Shatima's ticket. And also, you find Vice President Yemo Sibajo, Tunubu governors in Oshun for APC Grand Rally today. Article order PDP leaders in Oshogbu for Adeleke on Thursday. And Oshun Gubwa. Gunmen attack Labour Party candidates and uh, residents. Fire outbreak in a court candidate's house. I mean, all of this is happening one at the same time. Nigeria's security crisis assuming dangerous dimension, says the ACF. Lagos government orders probe into boat mishap. Just before we move away from the Nigerian Tribune, you have, we use U.S. jets British intelligence to eliminate ESWAP leader. President is quoted to say, 11 killed as bandit invade farms in Zamfara community. How, how do you even explain this? What's the correlation? Sickle cell disease could be treated with common plant. This is according to studies recent. And Kujie Jailbreak, NDLAE arrest wanted terror suspect with drug in Abuja. Please recapture another in Niger, the headlines you find this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. We have Chris Kane Day Wandu, uh, who joins us via Zoom this morning. It's okay to have him uh, join us. Thank you so much, Chris, for making out time to be part of the breakfast. Thank you very much for having me. All right, then let's start off with uh, the uh, let's start off with the last one, the Nigerian Tribune. Nigeria lost 4.2 trillion crude oil revenue in six months. Now. Uh, this is not because we want to actually lose or uh, we want to just be on the other side of the divide. It's because, according to OPEC, we haven't met our quota that's been given to every uh, you know, country at a time, producing country. So our quota, for the past six months, Nigeria has not met our quota. And that has resulted to losing uh, 4.2 trillion naira. That is no news. That's a mess if you ask me. It's no news. Uh, is a known fact. And this has been prolonged, not just um, our inability to meet uh, our quota in the past six months, uh, but the fact remains that um, the level of oil theft, especially within the Niger Delta area in the past few years, has been enormous. And uh, even the president and NFPC and other relevant authorities have come out to uh, raise that alarm several times. And um, I'm going to ask. Uh, those uh, oil being stolen by ghosts, of course not. They are human beings, and so many. I can tell you, there are so many interest groups that are benefiting from that act, and we need to question ourselves, and also we need to 
ask myself um, what is happening. And I'll place that squarely on the footstep of the federal government. And uh, to the minister, a large extent to state government, also local government, but more of the, uh, the federal government, because issue relating to crude or oil is within the exclusive links uh, uh, of the 1999 constitution as amended. So if anything happens happen within that sector, then the federal government has had responsibility. That is on one part. Then the second part is that crude are not just dealing with just book up boots. Mercy, this is a very huge multi-billion dollar uh, business. And this uh, in, uh, involves the use of tankers. When I mean tankers, I'm not talking of just the uh, normal petroleum tanker, the ones that you see on the street. I'm talking of high, uh, very, very huge uh, ship uh, that um, ferry crude on the globe. And that is why you bridged the question the activities of the Nigerian Navy. And I want to ask, I want to be specific on that Nigerian Navy because the Nigerian Navy has the rights to be able to protect our sea. And this um, chief, chief come into the country and still is, and get away from our waters and this um, is referring to all parts of the world. So you can see that is a huge uh, cartel. There is also the issue of the N NSDC, uh, the civil defense, which is also have that responsibility of making sure that uh, those pipe, uh, most of our pipelines and, um, and, and those uh, oil wells are well protected. But what are they doing? Don't forget that during the good luck uh, general administration and the United administration, that was kind of um, um, agreement where they contracted certain individuals and to protect the pipeline and also some of this. Work. But I think that was just this thing once the APC government came into, uh, came into power in 2015. And what we are having now is a high caliber of uh, economic sabotage being, uh, being um, put on Nigeria. Uh, by various interests, especially within the Niger Delta area. It is not just a, 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 a you and I cannot go into such business. These are business being uh, perpetrated by billionaires, billionaires and millionaires in dollars, not just money. And I just believe that the government seems not to want to have anything to do with that and they don't want to leave that in the because if they want, they know the right thing to do. 4.2 trillion naira. You can imagine what that can do to our economy. We are not even meeting our uh, open target. That will be now. Please. So, but um, Chris Kende Wandi, you have mentioned that this is not um, new because it's it's something that's been going on. And yes, the also you also have an excuse on the other hand, saying that all theft and uh, vandalism is also a problem. So, which exactly is the issue now that we're not making this money? We have lost. It's a lot, like you said, 4.2 trillion naira. Is it that it's the oil theft that's taking dominance, or it's the fact that we're not meeting uh, the OPEC quota? It's bunkering. If you're, if you, if you're able to produce more, put that into context. Most of those stolen oil or uh, oil, if you're able to, the federal government be able to lay their hands on it and export it, that, it will meet your target. The fact is that most of the IOCs at the PR are not their target are probably not able to uh, export as much as possible. Don't also forget the fact that several of these IOCs are leaving the country. I know that some of them have, have shut down their operations in the Niger Delta and have been looked to other parts of Africa, Angola, uh, Ghana, and uh, other countries. They are more economic friendly. So that we have a large chunk of oil within the um, Ogoni area. Uh, and you know that the problem that will be happening with Ogoni for a long time, um, the federal government and the IOTs, especially Shell, and no single oil has been driven within the area. That is a large, has a large chunk of oil. The federal government initiated a plan to get the Ogoni um, uh, land and waters um, clean. We have serious environmental issues there. But today, we are going to have done, done much, as much as we thought. It was not in so much the failure, and we thought by now, but reports also reached out to that. 
most of those uh, clearly the criminal is just uh, it, it, it has seen to be stored and nothing seems to be happening. So this is a cumulated accumulation of so many things, and uh, you cannot just um, factor that. The fact is that why we're not meeting that is because majority and most of our crew that is stolen, and um, some people find um, find it much easier to steal this uh, going and. And I will tell you for free is that also with the collaboration of some government officials, it is collaboration from government officials. And then if the government know they know what to do, if they want to need this board, they know what. And also remember that the uh, oil is so much in high demand now, with the pressure being mounted because of the war going on between Russia and uh, Ukraine. So you know that a lot of countries now are looking for. And these uh, uh, bunkers and the rest of them are making a name of peace. So it's, in, uh, it's an accumulative situation, it's just not situated to one. So most of these issues are paid as the fundamental behind this problem. So how do you react to this or the uh, caption on the Nigerian Tribune? I mean, it feels like we, we might just be here for a bit just before we move away. It talks about the fact that the president is saying that he's eager to go. Do you think the president is really eager to go? Because if, if he is, then he should have gone. If he's eager to go, so most Nigerians will say that they should go today. <laughs> most of all, myself will say the president should go because he has failed in all the indices, all the promises he made. Uh, he, uh, he has failed on them. And this is somebody that had made about three or four attempts to become the president, he was so desperate to be the president of Nigeria. And I like, 20. In fact, there was a point, remember the, the last election, election before 2015, the last one. He was crying on national TV. You saw him with the handkerchief and crying and saying that he's not going to win. So people went to go and uh, beg him and, uh, and, and dress him in blue and then um, um, got him to the seat. And personally, I feel that he didn't have the capacity. Police officer said it in 2015 that this worry that he said doesn't have the capacity. To manage affairs of Nigeria, although he's not really supported him because he's between the two uh, 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 and the whatever, he said that between Atiko and Abubak and uh, Buhari, he felt that he was not supported. But most of us knew that Buhari cannot deliver. And it's not a part of fact that today it is Why is it? Some, some look at me in the United Kingdom. It's but just not has it been, but, has it been, but, but, but why would the president um Chris Kane then want to why, why do you think the president should be making I mean saying that he's eager to go at this time when he knows that how many more months do we have just before uh 2023 we're just you know a few months away from 2023 and the president yes. is now saying that he's eager to go uh, does it mean that the president is overwhelmed and if he's overwhelmed by the happenings or uh, the things going on in the country. It's, it's still, we still have enough time for the president to take a walk. You said it now, you say he's overwhelmed, and the man is about, just as you say in local parlance, the man don't tire, he don't tire, he still don't pass, he still don't pass in capacity. In fact, if you use the, the local music to say, this don't get, ze, ze. What that means is that the man, the, man, the man is totally overwhelmed. Don't forget that. Uh, the, yes, he may have the interest of Nigeria at all, of course, we can use the former soldier and the patriot. But his state of health has not have mattered. And that is why we're also saying that, that people are running around and saying all sorts of things, uh, pick this person, elect this person. So and people don't have the capacity. It's not just saying, I want to, I want to become the president. For you to be president, there are so many things to read. Apart from having the capacity, you must have the same state of health to be able to do your job. Because the president of Nigeria is a 24-hour job. It's not like being government. Government, a governor is just one state. Local government, the chairman is just one local government. The president is the president of over 200 million Nigerians, 36 and FCT combined, 774 local government. You'll be having international... A, 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 a governor that had nothing to do with international politics. He just confined himself to just the state affairs. 
But a president goes beyond that. So it's not just anybody wants to wish to be a president. Of course, one is to have a wish, and also another thing for people to have the capacity to do what's supposed to do. So the man has got in there with this seven years. Not even now, or best not think that is now he said one They have been saying it long time ago that he, if he had his way, he would have. What is it? I don't believe that. No, but, but uh, Chris, I mean, we, we, and we, just go. Chris Kende, we, we're seeing what's going on in different parts of the world. We're talking about government and governance and other countries. If, if, if the president feels pressured or the heat is too much from the kitchen, then he's not under any, uh, you know, obligation. He's not, it's not compulsory that he has to continue to be the president. He can resign. And I'm sure that the Constitution considers that as, you know, an option for him. He doesn't have to wait until the end. He can take a work. It's simple. So yes, it, it, it probably might just be, it, it might just be, you know, um, another statement or words that's been put out. But Chris, we, we don't have to dwell so much on that. So we're able to look at all the issues this morning on our papers. Now let's turn our attention to the leadership. On the leadership, APC defends the choice of Shatima as Tunubu's running mate. And you have all the papers, I mean, this is just dominating all the papers, but reporting differently, uh, but one and the same thing, if you want to ask me uh, right here. Uh, he's saying that uh, APC defends the choice of Shatima as Tunubu's running mate. And Tunubu himself had talked about the reason why he chose uh, Shatima. That's because he couldn't. We're talking about the Muslim Muslim ticket. Because prior to this announcement, there's been a lot of buzz on different platforms. And Nigerians have been talking about uh, having a Muslim Muslim ticket. And he said the reason is that he chose Shatima for competence. I mean, uh, he couldn't. He couldn't have, uh, you know, looked at any other parts because you couldn't really find a competent candidate who would be a Christian. How do you? Um, let me, yes. Let me put land on the one we discussed. Um, President resigning is not his personal. Uh, Shock sure that even the president to resign today. So many things. Many factors that people that may not have one could be sitting the cabinet, two would be the political party under which he ran, you see, and so many other people, even from his family, they could even be from the world. Where do you want president? Where do you want to go to? So, the man, even if he decides to go, so many people around you will not allow him. So, he has no right and wait. Let him just wait till 2023. The damage has been done. Uh, we just hope that the next government will be able to effectively uh, cure some of these skills that we find ourselves the past um, eight, seven, eight years. Now to the issue of Tinubu, uh, 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 can defend what they want to defend. These governors have no choice than to chew in. I will tell you for that most of them are not happy with that choice. But the good party men, they will come out and tell you that all oh, they support because they have no Tinubu had made this choice. But to me, it is a uh, complete fallacy to tell me that out of close to, I don't know how many million Nigerians we have been got, probably up to one to three million uh, 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 northerners, and within that range, probably up to 40 million could be Christians. And you say you cannot find one single Christian in the north that is competent enough, if I'm using his word, and Shetima is qualified, and he has to be a Muslim. I, I have no problem with that. I think that electorate to determine in 20 uh, but that to me is sheer insensitivity on the part of um, Tinubu and his party don't forget that this is not the first time that Tinubu is trying to make that happen in 2015 he wanted to run with President Muhammad Buhari as a vice presidential candidate to Buhari and on a Muslim Muslim ticket and so many in the party including Kola Saraki and the president himself fought against that that is not really possible it was during that period that he grudgingly nominated Yemi Oshibato to be the vice presidential candidate of APC. What he has just done is what he has obtained. But um, I think I will always say the choice is seen. But it's a, it's a paradox that this same government, the APC, insisting that there should be a power change from the north to the south, are the ones now also, quote and unquote, endorsing a Muslim Muslim ticket. 
it's quite it's a paradox for me. But um, as I said, um, he has picked to make his choice. Now Nigerians have to make their choice. What he's saying, and which from somebody, the statement he issued, I mean, you know, is that uh, this is another night and uh, it's just like during the Abiola days, what happened when Abiola chose a Muslim as his uh, uh, vice presidential candidate. I asked you, in 1993 to 2022, ask yourself, in 1993, do we have Boko Haram? Do we have the problem of security? Do we have um, uh, um, churches being attacked, people being killed as they did? Do we have clearance, bishops in so many big in the past few weeks? Oh, that, the, the situation is quite a lot. So and we are not as polarized now as we were then. Nigeria so much in unity in 1993. But now, you can see the problem across Nigeria. The problem in the southeast, in the northeast, in the northwest, in the southwest, everywhere is polarized along ethnic and religious lines. And somebody is telling us is, is another hope. It is his choice, and it's choice of Nigeria to be a election. Let's see how this will pan out. But to me, we are practically through the Nigerian sense under the court. Well, you, you actually just answered the question of if this is anything close to what happened in 1993. I mean, the fact that Nigerians were willing to ignore whatever it is. But you have answered that question. So we move away. Uh, let's still uh, look at the leadership newspaper this morning. Uh, very big and very threatening and scary, if you ask me. Uh, it's something that a lot of people have pondered. There's been uh, a lot of thoughts around this, whether or not there would be an election in 2023. And here you have uh, Sikoda saying that terrorists may not allow elections to hold in 2023. Well, Judging by all that's going on, I mean, let's, let's look at it now. With all that is really going on, you have the fact that this, uh, the presidential, there's been an attack on the presidential advance convoy or team. And attack on the presidential's convoy, whether the president was there, is as good as attack on the president himself. You've also seen that there's also been a threat to, uh, you know, the airways. We've also seen a threat, uh, an attack on the Defense Academy. I mean, one would think that that would be the, the surest and secure place. We have seen the prison that holds very highly um, sensitive persons who are being held for crimes of terrorism being attacked in the federal capital territory. With all of this, and looking at this statement, what are your thoughts? I want to be a patriot, and um, so <laughs> let me be a patriot and say that <laughs> there will be an election in 2022. Let me not uh, uh, within the uh, negative uh, uh, um, conclusions, but let me also take the fact that in 2015, we had similar situation, probably if not, we have now. And especially within the north, the northwest and north, and the election had to be postponed for some kind of um, clearance. Um, um, the then president, um, good Lord Tata, had to put everything he had, all his feet, right forward to make sure that most of the areas that were under the uh, control of Boko Haram and other terrorist groups uh, uh, were able to gain them back, and that. Have election. Remember, we had election on, uh, across Nigeria. It was the context of um, terrorist uh, fact in those days. So uh, I want to believe that the federal government did what they need to do and try to need this record. Uh, uh, last week, I was um, I was one of the few editors who had a one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, interview with the chief of army staff, uh, General. Farouk Yusuf and the British Armed Forces um, um, Nigeria in the celebration. And um, because of our uh, ideas that everything will be done by the military, including the application that Nigeria will be safer and pacified. And I want to take him to the words. Um, but the resurgence of um, terror and uh, some of what we are seeing now, uh, whether we like 
Not just the terror, not just the terror. Look at what happened in Messi, just yesterday, in a place like Kosho State. The election is coming up this weekend. And some of the candidates um, have been, uh, been attacked. That of the Labour Party uh, had to rush out and make some tweets last night before that like that was under attack by, uh, I don't know, by whoever. Then that of the Akko Party also said them. There have also been a level of uh, attacks here and there. But I believe the agency should and things. The chairman of, it's not just the chairman of national INEC, also a few weeks back, raised the same alarm that the issue of insecurity may affect the 2023 election. And I hope that the secretary is doing as much as they can to make sure that this election, whether they like, they like it or not, makes it. I cannot wait for this election. Don't forget, the president just told me that he's tired. He wants to. So why do you want to elongate? Elongate is dead. So the election will definitely win. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's just quickly look at uh, the Punch newspaper. Uh, on the Punch newspaper, power generation drops. We know that. And this calls federal government battle for control. We know that we have talked about privatization, and privatization was not done entirely, so uh, government still is responsible for generation. But distribution, uh, it's privatized. But, but do you think that government should be, that's the issue, government should be concerned about the control of distribution? It's a, it's a value chain, uh, Messi, uh, starting from generation to distribution and life. And um, the problem we've always had, and I will say it, that's the privatization of the debt or NEPA, whatever you call it. The issue now is not even generated. Let me leave with you. The issue is that even the ones that have been generated, we cannot distribute. That is why you see the national grid dropping every other time, like a cat. You see that the most of 4,000, it will drop to 2,000. There was time, I think it was even as low as 200, 200 or 300. We have not been enough capacity to put more infrastructure in place to be able to take whatever is being generated. They generate, generate and give to the discourse to this. Most of them are not that. They cannot even be able to do that. Because those, those, what you have presently cannot be able to take that as little as 5,000. So, thinking of investing more, I personally, if you ask me, pers my personal opinion, I think that those licenses given to the, uh, 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 to the discourse will be revoked, and we should find a much more balanced way. But the contracts have been signed, and as we say in law, a valid contract is a contract that is signed, sealed, and delivered. So we should be able to look at these clauses, if we not shut ourselves like the and see whether there are areas where we can be. Because the discourse are even going into bankruptcy. Go and check what is going on. Most of them cannot even pay their bills. So, 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 the, pro so the problem is the discourse. So our problem now, our challenge now is not it's generation, it's the but it's distribution. The, the, ba the banks. The banks are already taking over the discourse. Go and look at Abuja. Go and look at Ibadan. What is going on? Most of them, I don't need to mention the bank. There's taking over the... Um, the discourse because they get them so much money to be and they cannot even pay. So we have a serious problem managerial infrastructure and also government. And it's just one where government continue to also interact on it. Don't forget so, so, but, 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 but the fact that we're not even generating enough because we're talking about the fact that what we have generated we're not even able to um, distribute. distribute. Uh, but yes. we, if we look at what we're even generating, is it even enough to distribute if you want to go by it? Because over time, this discourse would say that the problem does not lie on them because you cannot give what you don't have. So how do you distribute what you don't have? You also, you have yes. to ration and manage what you have and that's why you have what it is. So you have the French sector. I mean, it's really interesting to see that in, in the few, it, in some days that have passed, we have constantly talked about uh, the inability for some hospitals to function uh, properly. We've had situations where hospitals have said they were going to be charging their patient uh, an a fee of a thousand naira for every day for electricity. And you, you also need to consider that 
we, how much are we generating? The, the, um, the, the power plants, I was going to say refineries, but one and the same thing almost. Uh, the power plants that we have, according to you know, the, the postulation, the capacity for it, is that it should produ produce about 12,000 megawatts plus. But we haven't even produced close to that. We're producing below. So how then is the problem, uh, the issue of distribution when we have just 2,000 or 3,000 megawatts to distribute uh, to a population of over 211 million people? I'm still trying to understand how the discourse are the problem. Mercy. This is why we're going back to the issue we raised when we started. And you can't tell me why the man wants to go. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so what I'm saying, is that the man is like, don't forget, this is to somebody. APC in 2015 promised us that on a yearly basis, I'm going to inject 10,000 megawatts into the national grid. If they've been doing that, that is by, by time, would have had about 70,000. But instead of 70,000, we are only between 4,000, 3,000. 3, so we are not generating. I totally agree with you on the fact that on the area of generation, we are not generating enough. What I'm even saying is that even the 4,000 we are generating, we cannot even distribute. So, so you can see that there is a serious problem with the Sometime ago, don't forget some years back, one uh, one minister of power came out to tell us that within the power sector that there are some witch or something that that that, that was disturbing noise. I, I'm sure you remember that, that minister very, very well. That is the level of what when uh, somebody like uh, Professor Bat Naj came in as minister of power, a lot was expected. And he was on the road of making this possible. But what happened? They frustrated me out of it. And Chris, that is what Chris, we have to go now. What happened? Uh, Chris, thank you so much. We have to go. I mean, I've had a great time talking to you this morning and sharing your thoughts mm -hmm. on some issues. It's a bit uh, comical, if you ask me, but you have raised a valid points and insight. And we're hoping that uh, different stakeholders would swing into action. It's okay for us to talk, but um, it, it doesn't end in talking. We're talking about implementation. And if there's no doing, right. then there's nothing uh, to hope for. Thank you so much. We Thank look you forward to much. sharing your thoughts as we Thank proceed. I'm not, in, yeah, I'm not in here to go, but I have to go. So have a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank have you so much, Chris. Uh, Chris is a public affairs analyst, is also a journalist. Uh, thank you. We appreciate your time. And that's it this morning. And off the press, we'll return tomorrow uh, with more interesting headlines. It's been made available by our paper vendor. Uh, when we return, we will be looking at our first conversation. But let's just tell you what happened today in history. Stay with us.